Let's start by going over the main D7X interface. First off, at the top we have our logo, which you can custom brand and config, and we'll show you that later. We have uh, an, a display, sort of a ribbon across the top that stays there no matter what tab that you're on, and a tabbed interface that switches through various tabs, functionality, and tools that you can set up. When you initially start D7X, it will start to the System Info tab, the first tab on the left. And on the System Info tab, we have a lot more information than we have at the top. Um, first off, we've got the ticket number and name. This is actually the ticket number and name that you will assign during the Start Session prompt. Start Session prompt is something that you see on each new PC that you run on if you if you configure it and I recommend you do we'll go over that in their config later and uh, the start session prompt as you can see here we can enter in a client name and a tracking number those appear here if you do not enter a client name that name will be the computer name and our first bit of information we have the OS install date and this will tell you the date when uh, Windows was installed and how many days old the installation is this is deceiving in Windows 10 because Windows 10 um, and, and our, our major, um, and they're not calling them service packs anymore, but our major updates to Windows in the spring and the fall each year, it essentially reinstalls Windows. Even though you, you're presented with the idea that it's an update, it's actually a reinstall. So this date will change each time that occurs. With previous versions, prior to Windows 10, this would always reflect the original installation date unless you did an install over the top of an existing installation, which is still an original installation. Below that we have the uptime, and this will tell you how long the system's been up and running. And then below that we have the boot time. The boot time is not always accurate. Sometimes it will be like zero or three seconds. And that is just a weird anomaly. This time is actually reported by Windows Performance Monitor. Then we have our Windows mode. That's normal mode. Your other options would be, uh, of course, safe mode or safe mode with networking, safe mode with command prompt. And then we have a last run date of D7. D7X will, in the configuration, have an option to store the last run date in the registry. So this shows you when it was last run. I should mention that most of these items are clickable. So when you see a little hand appear above the item, you can click it and something will happen. So when I click on the OS install date, it actually pops up the About dialog for Windows. Below that, we have user and networking information. And you can see we have uh, username, profile. So if I click on the username, I actually get the user accounts dialog. And this is the classic one not the new control panel or the newer settings app dialog. We've also got our user profile path that shows you where the username is located, where all that user data is. If you click on that, it actually opens up the user profile path in Explorer. Below that, we've got computer name and domain. And if you click on either of these, it will bring up the system properties, computer name, and domain change dialog. We've also got our networking information over here where it tells you whether it's DHCP or a static IP address. We've got our LAN address. We've got our gateway. And if you click on the gateway, it'll actually open up the gateway in the default web browser. That could be useful if you can access your gateway for configuration, like your, your router static page for uh, configuration and such. Below that, we've got WAN IP. Uh, the WAN IP address can be disabled in the configuration, so it'll just say connected here, and I've done that for the purpose of this video. And below that, we have your DNS servers. If you want to click that, it will actually ask you if you want to ping the DNS server. Below that, we have our Windows security information, antivirus, anti-spyware, and, and firewall. Anti-spyware really means anti-malware application, and it's still termed as anti-spyware in the Windows terminology. You can see that we have Windows Defender, which is built in, and that it's also disabled by D7X, but that it's up to date. Windows Security Center actually reports whether or not the antivirus software is enabled, disabled, 
and whether or not it's up to date in its definitions. It'll also report, of course, what's installed. Notice if you click on any of these, this actually opens up an internal interface for D7. It's the same thing as going up to internal and doing the Windows Security Center interface. And this internal tool in D7X will show you the various products installed as reported by Windows Security Center. Of course, it just gives more detail on the information. We also have an uninstall button and a remove entry from WSC, that's Windows Security Center. This is actually very useful when you have security software that is installed, that used to be installed, but no longer is installed, yet Windows still thinks it's installed. That's what this is for, so you can then highlight that and click to remove the entry. Obviously, this will do nothing for Windows Defender since it's built in. Below that, we have our system information. You'll get the system a uh, series and model number if there is one. You'll have a motherboard with model number if there is one under that. If you click on these items, it'll actually ask you, hey, go to the website. This knows that Asus Tech Computer uh, is, is an Asus website, so it will uh, prompt you if you want to go to the support website for Asus. That also happens for other motherboards, uh, MSI, etc. For the system, if you have a Dell, for example, it'll show you a Dell in the service tag. And if you click this, it will actually ask you to go to the Dell support website. When you do, the neat thing about it, at least with Dells, is it will insert the service tag into the support site's URL. So you'll actually get the specific um, support page for the, that model computer. Likewise, the model number for the motherboard, for example, in this case the Sabertooth Z87, will be copied to the clipboard so that when you do get to the support website for ASUS, you'll be able to just right click and paste directly into the search field. Below that we have our BIOS, our CPU information, how many cores or threads we've got. We've also got our video card. Uh, this goes on the same premise. You can click this and it'll ask you if you want to go to the NVIDIA support website. You can get drivers really quickly. And below that, of course, we've got the, the driver version and date. And we've got our screen resolution and whether or not we're on battery power. If you're on a laptop, for example, this would be useful. Clicking this actually will download and open automatically Nearsoft's battery info view. And I think this is a pretty neat app. It will tell you the charge capacity, um, uh, current capacity. Let's see, what, what's the good one in here? Oh, battery health. This will actually tell you the health of the battery and about how long it's got left in its life. I actually have a battery, not because I'm on a laptop, but because Battery Info View detects my UPS. And again, this is a Nearsoft freeware app that the D7X just downloads when you click on that. In the right column, we have our alerts, and these alerts are clickable as well, but you'll double click them. For example, when I see system device issues, check hidden devices in device manager. So if you double click this, I'll actually open up our system device and driver issues dialog box. From here, you can open up computer management or device manager, whichever your preference. Um, but you can also click on the various devices and, and, and see what uh, the problem is if one is listed. You can see our device manager tab here. We don't have anything that's out of the ordinary. We've also got check, um, I'm going to skip over the event log. That's a good one for later. But uh, when you click on this, it will open up the D7X internal event viewer, which you'll also find on the tools tab at the top, event log viewer. And below that, we've got check auto start services. It'll just tell you, hey, these services are uh, set to automatically start with Windows, but they're not running right now. Is that okay? In many cases, it is fine because the service just starts and stops, and that's all it needs to do after Windows is logged in. In some cases, it may indicate a broken service or a broken software that's not functioning properly associated with that service. Then below that, we have all of our pass checks. These are things that D7X checks for when it starts up, just to make sure everything's okay. Windows is activated. We don't have any crash dumps. If we did have crash dumps, we'd have a separate alert here, and double-clicking that would bring up Nearsoft's blue screen view, which is another useful app. 
Uh, it tells us our antivirus software is up to date, uh, Internet Explorer is up to date, not like you pay attention to this anymore. In, in uh, Windows XP through Windows 7, this was something you wanted to pay attention to. It tells you our MS config state, if it's normal or if it's in a selective startup state. Um, RAM is sufficient for this OS. You will get a RAM message that you need to upgrade the RAM in the system if you're running Windows 10 and you have less than 4 gigabytes of RAM. If you're running, uh, I'm sorry, 10 and 8. If you're running Windows 7 and Vista, you need 2 gigs of RAM or, you'll, or, or D7X will trigger the RAM upgrade alert. And with Windows XP, you need 1 gig. Also, there's a hard drive space available. When the hard drive space is low, and by low I mean less than 10%, you're going to get uh, an alert for that. You'll also have an alert if System Restore is disabled. MSCEIP, this is the Microsoft Customer Experience Improvement Program. If that is enabled, you will also have an alert for that, and double-clicking it will bring up the dialog that allows you the Windows dialog that allows you to disable the Customer Experience Improvement Program. Below that, we've also got no dirty volumes detected. That just checks all the drives and makes sure that nothing is scheduled to run a check disk or has the dirty bit set. Below that, the user profile path is not temporary. That's another check and alert where if you've seen corrupted user profiles in the past, you'll notice sometimes it will log them in under a temporary account or a temporary uh, set of user directories. And then, of course, the user will be missing all of their, you know, their desktop items, shortcuts, documents, etc., because they're logged into this temporary path. D7X just alerts you anytime that it detects you're in a temporary path so that you know right off and you don't have to check and go diving and digging to figure this out. And finally, there is a PIO mode check where it, it tests all of the IDE controllers and makes sure that they're all in, gosh, it's been so long, I forget the mode now, but not PIO mode. Um, PIO mode is an older mode that Windows would enable on an IDE controller if there were numerous errors on a drive. The thing that would trigger PIO mode sometimes is bad CDs. And so a bad CD could actually trigger PIO mode on a hard drive controller. And that would actually affect the hard drive if it was attached to the same controller. So if you had a master-slave situation, if those drives went into PIO mode, the hard drive would actually operate much slower. So this is just another alert for that. And if you had that alert, you could double-click it, and it would give you the option to reset that, disabling PIO mode. It would, of course, require a reboot. So I think that about covers the System Info tab. Up here you can hit Rescan System Info. You can click that just to refresh all of the information here. I hope that's been helpful introducing you to the System Info tab. Please watch our other videos for more.